We're answering more of your dynasty questions on today's episode of Locked On Dynasty. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Matt Williamson and Ryan McDowell. Thanks for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo code Locked On. That's all caps, Locked On, in the game store. Welcome to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan McDowell. You can follow me on Twitter at RyanMC23. Joining me, as always, is Matt Williamson. Find Matt on Twitter at WilliamsonNFL. Matt, how's it going today? I'm well. How are you? I'm good as well. Good, uh, good, look, good. Looking forward to uh, to week 18 here. Matt, yeah. we, we answered some Dynasty questions, some listener questions on yesterday's episode. We're going to do that same thing today. We've got some more good ones. Uh, and, and I referenced this first question yesterday. I thought we would get to it then. Did not. But it's a good one from uh, from Ken. That's uh, at the real the third on Twitter. Ken says no one ever talks about losing in fantasy football or making the wrong lineup decisions. But are there any thoughts on a conversation about how you both deal with the rand- randomness of fantasy football, especially during single elimination playoff weeks? Uh, yeah, Ken's right. You know, you don't, I won't say no one ever talks about it, but you don't see much talk about, uh, about losing and, uh, you know, nobody, nobody wants to, to think about that or, or talk about it. You don't want to focus on it. But you, you kind of started talking about this topic a little bit yesterday in, in one of those conversations, Matt, and this, this stung me hard this year. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I, I will talk about it now, even though it's no fun. Uh, I didn't win a single dynasty league championship this me season. Neither. I didn't win a single one. Um, I made the playoffs. I, I think ultimately I was in 10 dynasty leagues this year. I made the playoffs in nine of those. So, you know, that wasn't the problem. I was the, uh, the number one seed uh, going into the playoffs in four of those, I believe. So uh, that, you know, won, won the regular season, essentially, if you want to think about it that way, that, that feels good, right? Like you, you, you feel pretty good about that going into the, into the playoffs that, that maybe you're the, uh, you're the favorite to win the title. And then, it's what Ken's talking about here, the randomness or, or, or poor lineup decisions. And, and in that one week, uh, single elimination that, that hurts you. It hurts you a lot more in week 16 and 17 than it does in week one and two. Um, sure I, does. I mean, yeah. yeah, like I, I do think ultimately it it's part of the game though. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it stinks. I wish it, I wish it didn't happen to me. I wish I won a couple titles and instead of losing them, especially when I looked at myself as, as the favorite or I, I had the best team during the regular season, it didn't, uh, it didn't translate to a title and that's just how it goes sometimes. I, I mean, I will say if that, you know, if you're getting to a point where that really bugs you, then I think there's some, some league format things you could change, right? I mean, you yeah. could play best ball, um, which, fixes uh, if you want to say fixes it, it it answers a couple of those issues um but f- for for most leagues this is just how it goes and uh, you you're, you're going to take those those losses along with hopefully a lot of wins yeah i didn't win any either i'm in 7 or 8 and um i was 12 and 2 in one league got the bye and in the semifinals i lost my matchup and I scored like 160 points. I lost my matchup by under one point, a fraction of a point. That one stung. I mean, there's no doubt because I started all the right guys. I had an awesome team. I did my job, but my defensive coordinator got fired on that one. <laughs> and then another one, I was in the finals and I looked at the lineups and I'm like, oh, this dude's got Tyler Algier, Mac Jones, Mike Evans, Richie James. This is who he's <laughs> starting against me, my powerhouse. And I got Josh Allen and Jamar Chase. I'm going to blow this dude out. Well, I lost by like 80 points. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, if you if yeah. you were facing Mike Evans, it probably felt good uh, pre-game, and it felt really bad after the game. That yeah. that did not go your way. So, uh, I mean, there's no real answer to this to Ken's question. Uh, it is, it is, it is worth discussing because, uh, you know, whether you play in a bunch of leagues, whether you host a dynasty podcast, like these things are real parts of the game and, and they uh, impact and affect every single one of us that play. So the one thing I I don't beat myself up about though, is if I'm torn between running back one and running back two, and I pick the wrong one. I'm okay with that. And I don't mind having a lot of points on my bench either. You know, like, well, I had all my points on my bench. Well, they're still on your fantasy team. They're still assets. And like my 16 year old makes fun of me because, you know, he's rolling the fantasy now too. And he'll be like, dad, but my app says the projected points for this guy is higher (laughs) than the guy you want me to start. And I'm like, I know more than those guys. I am not listening to projected <laughs> points. I've done, I know who those people are and I'll, I'll take the Pepsi challenge against any of them. He's like, you're not, you know, so I don't even look at that stuff. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Next question comes from Michael. That's at Michael E. Ricci on, uh, on Twitter. He says, what kind of value do aging running backs like Alvin Kamara and Leonard Fournette have? I just won a league title, but I have, I have little in picks to replace them. Are they a hold and hope for the best, or should I take what I can and run? Take what um, you can and run. For for both, you think? I think so. I'm going to put Dalvin Cook in that list, too. I mean, I, I think he's slipping, and it's not as obvious with him. Um, but I think some of these guys are, are slipping. You're not going to get a ton for Fournette, obviously. I, I'm curious what goes on coaching-wise with the Saints, but they don't seem to throw Kamara the ball or give him enough goal line stuff, and that's a that's just a killer. Yeah, I did check the uh, Dynasty Trade Finder over on DLF uh, to see some recent trades involving these two uh, players that Michael mentions. The value for Kamara was much better than I expected. Really? I I have to say. Um, Some recent trades, uh, Rashad Bateman and a third for Kamara. Uh, Okay. uh, A first, a second, and Sky Moore for Alvin Kamara. Uh, and then a, a couple of examples of either 20, 2023 or 2024 first rounders, even up for Kamara. I, I would take any first rounder for him at this point. Yeah. Uh, I was actually surprised there were so many examples of, of first round picks being traded for Kamara. So he definitely still has some value. Uh, and I, I share your concern. So I, I think Kamara is an easier sell. I might actually be in favor of buying Leonard Fournette after seeing some of these trades, multiple trades of Fournette for a third round rookie pick. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, for, Fournette for Greg Dulcich, Fournette for Irv Smith and Sam Ellinger. Uh, <laughs> there, there were a couple that were, the picks were a little bit better, a second, a third and a fourth for Fournette, a second and a third for Fournette. I'll, I'll, I'll take the picks in that one. But if I can get him for a third rounder or for a, you know, for end of roster guys, I'm, I'm glad to do that. So ultimately I would say you probably have to hold for net, but uh, based on these trades, I would, I would try to move on from Alvin Kamara. Yeah, I totally agree with how you laid that out. And again, I think I'd put cook with Kamara. Matt, when we come back, we will continue with some more listener questions. Guys, I'm pretty wound up about uh, our new partner and sponsor of this podcast today, and and that's the mobile game Ultimate Football GM, which is right up my alley. I mean, if you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing a football franchise, well, I pretty much have since I could crawl. Well, your dream has come true, and and this dream, this game is definitely for you. Uh, Manage every strategic aspect of, of your team. You play through the season. Hopefully, you lead your team to glory. You're responsible for hiring the right coaches and the coordinators. Trading players, which is a blast. Making draft picks, which is right up my alley as well. Navigating your franchise through free agency in the draft and all the ups and downs of the season. All this is in in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want to. Um, The... Like I said, this is just right up my alley. But I've been a personnel guy since I've known anything about football. So Locked On Dynasty listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On, all caps, in the game store. That's Locked On. So make sure to check it out today. The down, to download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. That's ultimate dash 
gm.com ultimate football gm start your dynasty today thanks again for making locked on dynasty your first listen every day Subscribe to the Locked On NFL Podcast. Get daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories, in-depth analysis on the biggest games with key NFL predictions, and on Monday, local insiders cover the weekend's games with game-to-game episodes. That's Locked On NFL, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Matt, let's continue looking at some listener questions here. Uh, back to our buddy Murray. That's at laxatives Murray on Twitter. This is a good one. If you went all in on veterans and you lost in the finals, what are your next steps? Ooh. So you, you make the trades, you give up the future picks, you give up some young prospects, you're buying those veterans uh, and, and they let you down or they get injured or you just, you just don't win the title. Now you, you're stuck with, a bunch of old guys. What are you doing now, Matt? Yeah, I think you can easily overreact and be like, I tried that experiment. Mm-hmm. I lost. I'm going to trade these guys for Leonard Fournette prices. Whew. You know, that that's tough because it's going to be a while till you come back if you're getting a bunch of third round rookie picks and things like that in return for potential starters next year. So I think you kind of have to weigh it like, can I roll with this thing one more time? Or what if I sell two of my pieces or kind of play the fence? I don't have a great answer. I think you'd know the answer to this one better than me, but uh, I just tend not to try. I, I rarely do that. I rarely push all my chips in the in the middle without future picks and go all into win it. Yeah, I don't either, but I do think that's something that happens a lot. So I think sure. it's a, a good question, a good conversation. And, and you hit on it a little bit there, but I think my first piece of advice would be to be patient. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if you're trying to dump all of these players, you're you're disappointed, you you made your moves and it didn't pay off, you didn't win the title. Uh, and and like you said, if you're selling low on half your team, that that's not going to work well for you most likely. Right. Um, I think maybe the better play, especially this time of year and, and and really over the next three or four months, embrace that strategy. Keep buying those veterans, right? Keep buying those those cheap guys. Um, go out and buy Leonard Fournette so he can be your RB4, RB5. Uh, buy Tyler Lockett. He's going to be cheap. Uh, yeah, re- yeah. Re- we talk about it all the time. The offseason is the best time to acquire those veterans because their price – goes down uh so dramatically yeah yeah um so stay active in that trade market uh just because you don't want to sell low on these players doesn't mean you don't want to sell them at all Uh, we talked about for example the the alvin kamara uh price earlier if you have if you have a guy like kamara you flip him for a first maybe you get a little bit on top of that um so don't don't sell low don't panic be patient and embrace the strategy. You're you're not going to go from a really old team to a really young team. Uh, it's going to be painful if you do. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, that's not going to happen quickly. So, yeah, be patient. You can. There, there's st- st- uh, still certainly hope for the future there. Maybe you trade two old guys for a medium aged guy. You know, and gradually get slower or get, you get younger. Next question comes from Pizza pizza on twitter that's at k y z l y zero what would it cost for you to give up the 101 that 101 rookie pick Bijan robinson he says i was offered 106 107 and 108 in a 10 team super flex feels like a lot for a running back i'm not sure i'm not sure either matt what do you think 10 team league i say 10 team super flex is key in this conversation don't you think I do. Uh, quarterbacks are going to be worth a little bit less here, but because um, mm-hmm. it's uh, ten teams, people. right? Yep. And and studs are going to matter more. But uh, those picks, six, seven, and eight, you're you're probably getting, uh, you know, you're probably getting two wide receivers and maybe the RB three, or maybe you're even getting three wide receivers there with those picks. I was thinking uh, you might have a shot at one of the top three quarterbacks, though. Oh, I mean, Levis. Levis, yeah, yeah, Levis, you would, you would think Levis would be in that range, maybe even later. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of wide receivers being drafted ahead of Levis in, in those rookie drafts. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You making this move? You giving up Bijan for, for these three picks? I, 
subject to change because I don't know the class as well as I'd like. And if this was a 12 teamer, I think it'd be easier, but I think, yes. You know, I mean, generally speaking, if I'm going to get first round rookie wide receivers, they always turn, they almost always turn into really good players. You know what I mean? If, if it's a lave Wilson type guys, you know, and I know those are extreme, so maybe that's not the best example. But if I'm going to get three high pedigree dynasty assets for what's still somewhat of an unknown, and I don't even know what team he's going to, I think I'm doing it. Well, I mean, if you're if you're thinking Bijan goes 101, uh, let's say that that the two quarterbacks Stroud and Young go two and three. Mm-hmm. You know, four is maybe uh, maybe that's Gibbs, Most the Alabama Gibbs be running back, high. right? Right. So now you're looking at five, six, seven, eight for there, there's uh, the big four wide receivers, uh, which are Smith and Jigba. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I shouldn't have said that. Now I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna remember them all. Jordan Addison, Addison, uh, Johnston, TCU, yeah. yeah, Johnston from TCU, and uh, one more that I'm missing here. Um, oh, uh, Keishon Butte, who had announced that he was staying in school, and now he's in the he's in the mm-hmm. draft. He's had a change of heart. So now you've got four wide receivers that I think are are. are High quality, prospect, high, yeah. very high quality, certainly uh, likely first round NFL draft picks. And you're getting you're getting three of those, right? Or you just take two and then trade 107 for a future first and another young running back you like or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I'm. I, it's tough to trade Bijan, especially, mm-hmm. you know, this early in the offseason. You think if you've had that 101 or if it looks like you've. Uh, you've assumed you've had the 101. You, you've already you're already kind of picturing him on your roster. Uh, I did uh, go to Twitter to find some other picks or some other trades involving the 101, and, and there's been several out there. Uh, 101 for Deshaun Watson in a super flex league. Um, a, a similar hmm. trade to the one we're talking about here. 101 for 108, 110, and 2.01. Uh, this is a better deal though, obviously, right? Yeah. 101 for Tua and Bateman. Uh as that that's in a super flex league. Yeah. 101 for 110, 111, and 112. So again, this is this is a better version of that. And 101 for 103 and 108. Uh so yeah, I think uh pizza or in I think the neighborhood, yeah, this right. Trade. Yeah, this is better than any of the offers that we talked about. So they're paying a little over market. And I keep going back to if I'm pick if I have 106, 107, 108. I can almost guarantee I'm not going to take three receivers in a row. I'm going to make some kind of trade or, you know, one of those picks is probably going to move. And hey, nothing wrong with taking those, taking three of those receivers either though. No, right, right. Matt, when we come back, we'll continue answering some dynasty questions. All right. We have told you a lot about LinkedIn jobs over the last several months. And as, as a small business owner or hiring manager, Success in 2023 all depends on team members you surround yourself with. I mean, you have to check in LinkedIn jobs. You can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have skills, values, and experience to really help you achieve your goals. So uh, LinkedIn jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post, company, and their eight 175 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. Uh, LinkedIn jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications. And it's all on one platform, of course. Um, That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs. Number one for delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to. And it's faster. That's the key. Uh, Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL, all one word. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. There are terms and conditions that apply. Matt, our next question comes from uh, from Blake. Blake says, that's at Blake Schulte on Twitter. Blake says, I have a core of Justin Herbert, Brees Hall, Pollard, Javante, Chase, St. Brown, Pickens, Pittman, Ayuk, Dotson. Whew, what a my what kind a team. of team. Yeah, I, I like this one. Uh, he says, I have two first rounders, 105 and 110, plus two second rounders. Should I hold on to them for depth 
or package them to try to get Bijan Robinson. So another trade for Bijan, trade for 101 question. Uh, we talked about hmm. that right before the break, gave some examples of some trades that uh, were getting done. So five and 10, let's, let's go back here. Um, he doesn't specify if this is a one quarterback or, or super flex right. did, did just mention uh, Justin Herbert is the only quarterback. So I'm going to assume this is single quarterback uh, five. You're getting, uh, you're getting one of those receivers you yeah. like, let's call it Jordan Addison at five and, and maybe at 10, you know, you're, you're digging a little bit deeper there with uh probably a second round NFL draft receiver or a third round running back. I, I think I might pay up for Bijan in this case. That's what, what I was think? thinking too, because already have some nice depth here. Yeah. Right. I mean, you wouldn't have to, it's a good example of staying young, but also pushing your chips in the middle to kind of reference a, a question we talked about earlier. I mean, it, it, it's, it, you're not giving up all your future assets to, to try to win now, but you absolutely could win now with this team. Right. The one thing I would mention with this team specifically, though, is maybe I would say, how about Javante in 10? You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't mind moving Javante. Like, I think the, his beginning of next year might be very J.K. Dobbins-like. Mm, okay. So, plus, I don't want that team's kind of a disaster. Yeah, we we have talked about it on on here recently that we value, uh, or the, uh, you said you value Javante around that 105 range. So, yeah, I, th I think that is that would be fair as well. Next one comes from the dude that's at uh, Big Kimbalski, Big Kimbalski28 on Twitter. Uh, good question here. Good topic. What do we do with Cooper Cup next year? Stafford being questionable. Uh, Cup is getting up there. He is getting up there. He is. Um, and, and of course, dealing with that injury as well. We do know. Stafford is coming back. At least that's what's been announced. So that, that part is no longer necessarily in question. Cup is 29 and a half years old, uh, but was super productive before that injury. 22 and a half fantasy points per game. Uh, that, that was good for the wide receiver too, if you're looking at that points per game number. So still super productive. And that was even in, in that uh, that final game where he, uh, I think he had a couple catches and, and negative yardage uh, before he got injured. What are you thinking on cup here, Matt? Yeah, I think his stock has probably dropped significantly. There's a lot of concerns around the Rams Stafford as, as the dude mentions here. Um, however, I'm not minimizing what Cooper is cup is, is as a player. Cause he's a great player, no matter what system he's in. But because McVay schemes him up so much and so well, I don't foresee him falling off a cliff at all. He could be a little less quick, a little less fast, you know, a little less explosive. But they're going to get him the football because it works, and McVay is a master at it. So I'm usually not a buy older receiver type of guy, but I bet this is a nice buying window right now. Well, and, and I mean, the speed, the explosion that you mentioned there, that that's not necessarily been the, uh, the focus of Cooper cups game right, right? anyway. So, you know, even if he, even if he loses a step as he approaches 30 years old, not necessarily a concern, as you mentioned, uh, he is down to the wide receiver 15. That's in our, uh, that's from our December dynasty ADP at DLF. Uh, we'll have some updated dynasty ADP on next week's show. I would expect Cooper cup to be in that same range wide receiver, 15 late second, early third round uh, pick most likely. And um, you know, I mean, it's kind of the same story that we've talked about with so many players. He, for me, he would be tough to invest a second or third round startup pick in. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're talking about an established team where I can, much different. Uh, I, I can buy at a discount. Yes. Much different and definitely willing to do that. Cooper Cup is going to be pretty high on my list of uh, trade targets this offseason. I mean, even if it's Mayfield, he'll put up, I mean, Cup will put up points. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's yeah. the other thing I was going to say. I, I think he is, I think he's proven to be quarterback proof. Um, I, I, I'm not worried about uh, if Stafford's on the field or not, honestly. Um uh, yeah, I, I think I think Cup is is a screaming buy uh, this offseason. Yeah, yeah, I do too. 
Matt, that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, please make sure you download and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe to the Locked On Dynasty channel on YouTube. Remember to follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Dynasty. Follow Matt at Williamson NFL. And I'm Ryan MC23. We'll be back next time with more Locked On Dynasty.